Creative hands and minds behind Toad Hollow, where we dye yarn and make bags. I am Mary Beth. I'm Helen. And today I am having. <laughs> Actually, I'm on my way out to the post office and to um, get some up... bagels. Oh, we're gonna get some bagels. So um, once we're done podcasting, I'm running out and getting bagels, and I will have my tea then. But for right now, I have an empty tea mug. I'm having a uh, Mint Magic by Celestial Seasonings, but it's way too hot for me to even test it. So it's my first cup. She will try it I on the podcast, it. and on you podcast. will get to see what it is like. Yes. Okay. So. All right. Um, okay, so we have a couple of questions from yesterday's podcast. Um, Judy Riggy said when you... Um, yeah, that it, okay, just wanted to make sure I was pronouncing that right. Uh, when you said if you did it again, you wouldn't do the Autumn Harvest Cowl with variegated yarn, with either, would either the Fairy Tale or Princess Bride work okay? She wanted to do a sampler cowl, uh, cowl but doesn't want to lose the details. All right, so uh, Snuffle Off, I guess, could you get off there, please? The Where I had the treats held, <laughs> Drew is snuffling around there now, only the, now there's yarn. All right, so this is the Autumn Harvest Cowl. And um, the Princess Bride, I think, would be very, very pretty in it. However, it does have brown speckles. I don't think it's going to affect it that much. Um, when you said fairy tale, I didn't know whether you meant our Once Upon a Time or the monthly fairy tales. If you're doing the monthly fairy tales, wolf or red would be perfect. The, the section is um, this section here with the owls and the trees. I think. The variegation works okay. So like the Princess Bride would all work and maybe you use left-handed. I was thinking of doing it all in one color. Oh, you could do that too. Then you don't get to use the mini sets. No, you don't. Um, and I I personally, when I'm doing these things, I like the, the added delineation of a different color for each section. Okay, so then um, I was thinking about Once Upon a Time, if you did the Once Upon a Time minis or if you're doing just one color. Uh, Once Upon a Time would be perfect. So if you look and find um, one of the most tonal ones in the mini set, if you're doing minis and do it for that particular section, yeah. um, I think you'd be fine. You or really would. As you said, one color, red or wolf. Right. Um, or Once Upon a Time would be good, Into the Sunset would be good. Bippity so would work, be very, yeah. very faint, soft cowl. Yeah, but um, it would be beautiful. Yeah. So, um, yes, so, Fairy Tales and uh, Princess Bride would definitely work with that. I think the Invitation would work too, looking at it down here. Because it's so light. Mm -hmm. That the... And the colors, the variegation is so light, I think it would yeah. work. So yeah, definitely, there, there are lots of options. Okay, Amanda Adamson said, uh, just curious, do you still think um, Maryland Sheep and Wool orders and orders made right after you announced what we'll, what we'll need for the Tri-Wizarding Tournament will be shipping in time to get started around June 1st? Okay, so at the beginning of the podcast, you may have seen a notification that the Goblet of Fire has been stolen. Terrible. Fred and George got really pissed off that they weren't allowed to be part of it and they stole the Goblet of Fire. And we have to find it. So the Triwizarding Tournament has been pushed off by a week. We will start one week late and finish one week late. <sighs> the dogs have issues today. We made the mistake of opening, I made the mistake of opening the window so we could have some fresh air and... <laughs> we will have none of that in this household. Um, with... Does the delayed date start? Then the answer is yes, you will get your card in time. 
I happen to know, Amanda, you got wolf. We dyed it yesterday. It's not going out before Monday. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's it's got to dry. Um, and so, it is so humid. foggy here right now that things are not drying properly. Right. So um, they will be coming. And um, since we will not be starting until June 8th, you yeah, have plenty of time. It will get it in plenty of time. George and Fred did us a favor. A little bit, so, yeah. Um, everybody will have their yarn in time to start. Um, I mean, if you ordered... If you've already ordered. Right. If you order now, it won't and happen. it's not on the die schedule yet, it's going to be dicey. Right. Um, but also, um, Monday, we are releasing the June Fairy Tale. So um, now we can just release the June Fairy Tale. We won't have to be doing the Triwizard and distracting at the same time. So... Thank you, Fred George. Right. <laughs> Making our lives just a little bit easier. <laughs> However, we still need to find the Goblet of Fire. Yes. So we may be calling on you to help with that. Um, okay. Darcy says she just sent, found a series on Netflix called Once Upon a Time that deals with the dark side of fairy tales, and she thought we might enjoy it. Well, as a matter of fact, I think we're in, what, season three? Three. We are deep into season three. <laughs> so... Thank you. Like yes. mine, speaking yes. alike. We're on to that. Um, Dewey. <laughs> and I have to say, it's going to impact the way we dye some of the upcoming but, fairies. <laughs> All right. Uh, Mrs. Kruski says, uh, there was a question about the cowl on the episode with the crochet projects. And um, Helen didn't mention what the pattern was. She thinks that the person was asking about the crochet cowl. Thank you very much for pointing that out to us. And this is the cowl, I think, that the question was about because this is our crochet cowl. I have looked it up. It is the Copenhagen cowl by... Hold on. Uh, the Copenhagen cowl by Fiberflux, who is Jennifer Dickerson. It is a free cowl, a free pattern on Ravelry. And... You'd swear she did it in the crawdad. In the crawdads. Um, so that is um, Copenhagen, like the city. The Copenhagen cowl. Okay. Um, Kathy Clark says, what is a magic knot? Okay. A magic knot is a way of joining two strands of yarn together when you're knitting. Um, some people like to just weave in the ends. Some people like to knit in the ends. Some people um, use a spit method where they it's wet the, their fingers. I think it's called the Russian join. <laughs> okay. I, I've heard people call it the spit join um, where you moisten them together and I, I think basically um, you felt them felt together. Them together. Um, and that's one way of doing it. I figure nobody sees the back of my projects. So I don't care if there's a tiny little knot there. Right. And I find that the magic knot works very well for me. So the magic knot is going to be taking two pieces of yarn and I am going to knot them together. So what you do is you hold them with the ends going in opposite directions. I have the end of this yarn going that way and the end of the, the orange yarn going that way. And what I do is I just tie a single knot around the first piece of string. You probably cannot see this at all, but I was gonna say, I think what we'll do is somewhere down the road we'll do a quick video on it where um But you tie a piece you tie a knot. I, you, I hold the camera and like that around the first piece of string. And then you take this piece, the orange piece, and tie a knot. like that around that piece of string so now you have a knot here and a knot here and you pull them together like that and it makes a really nice tight join and then if you do it with long enough ends you can just sew the ends in once or twice so that the ends are hidden and then you just have a little tiny knot on the back of your work and I think the key on the magic knot is because I've had some of my magic knots come undone is um don't snip your end too close to the knot because the knot will work itself out 
as Mary Beth said, if you leave, leave yourself a long enough end to weave in, that's the best way to do it. Mm -hmm. You're still weaving in ends, but you're, you've got a little bit of a tighter join than just weaving in ends. Right. Um, and, um, if you just, if you leave yourself a little bit and just, you're just weaving it in under like two stitches rather yeah. than a bunch of stitches, then it's just, it's a piece of cake. Yeah. Really and is. I mean... As far as your work is concerned, you can't really see the knot because it's so small unless you're looking for it. And you might have a slight bump in right. your work, but if that doesn't bother you. Then it's the easiest way to join. For me, it's the way if I'm working with minis or anything like that, or if I'm working with things that are a lot of different color changes, my best way of doing it. If I am doing something where I'm doing, um, excuse me, when I did the um, JC sweater, uh, where I did the northern lights to begin with and then I did a block of Forsythia Randia because I didn't want to join two colors um, I wanted to break between the two skeins um, There since it was a great big swath of color I just wove in the ends very quickly because there weren't that many to do um, But if I'm doing something that has lots and lots of ends magic knot is a piece of cake. Yeah Okay all right, so um, those are the questions from today. Okay. Do you have any others? No. Okay. All right, then what we thought we'd do was, um, we thought about, so we'd talk about a, uh, very quickly about a show that we watched last night um, that was absolutely perfect. Yeah. For the time period, for our frames of mind, for everything. Um, I don't know if you guys watch America's Got Talent, but we love it. Yes. We Season 15 started this week right we started what four year, three years I think ago. like 11 yeah were we like 11 I think so okay because we did have Nick Cannon for the host for one or two seasons right and then Tyra Banks was there for a while and Terry Cruz has just taken over yeah so I think out of all of them Terry Cruz is my favorite as he's far from the best the host um he just has so much fun um but we watched the first episode because they were able to film some before the lockdown came through for the coronavirus. Um, and it's going to be very interesting to see what they do going forward. Because uh, I did read an article that said that they are going to be judging some at-home um, acts as well as the ones that were able to come into Los Angeles to perform on stage. So um, it's going to be very interesting to see. Yeah, because I did not enjoy the voice as much. When they got to the point where they were doing it from home. Right. Um, but I can see where this type of thing might be better than the voice. Um, not better than, obviously, the production. But, uh, well, and I, I, I think, mean, they act, I think, lend themselves better to an at-home right. uh, amateur video type of thing. I do think that um, there was the, the comedian who did voice impressions, who was... Um, performing in front of a live audience. He has a big internet following. He does social media. Um, big social media following, but he was performing before a live audience for the first time yeah. ever. And he did phenomenally well. He did really well, but um, there's a difference. Oh, absolutely. There's a different yeah. vibe. There's right. a different feeling in the air when you're doing it. And, and you'll never nerves. get the... Um, mm -hmm. The feeling of standing on that stage and seeing the crowd react to you. Right. Because that, I mean, that's just life-changing for oh, some people. Oh, yes, so. most definitely. But also, doing it at home takes away the nerves a little bit. Yeah. So that, um, it's a, it, it, it's going to be interesting to see well, how... You also get to do multiple takes. Right. You know, so that, um, or are they doing it live and you can't do multiple, multiple takes? I don't know. I don't. I, I have no idea. Right. We have no idea. But we both decided we would each pick our favorite act from last night and just comment on it briefly and um, then encourage you to watch it because it is the perfect feel-good show. It's just, yeah. I cry at some points. <laughs> and I mean, you, I you see smile. some come out and you're like, eh, I'm going to cry. Yeah. <laughs> No, gonna and then you see some come out and you're like oh who told you that was a good idea yeah. I mean really who told you that with that performance artist really who told you that was a good idea um but anyway do you want to go first and tell what your favorite was uh sure I love the pig act surprise <laughs> the animal act got me um but there was a 
they were trained pigs and they had pigs of all sizes and there was I one just, who was over 700 pounds yeah he, he was very big she he, she was very funny she was um and, and then the he, little one that that would not stay in position <laughs> But I just, I, I thought they were great. Well, the judges were very surprised that the pigs were able to do the tricks that normally only dogs would do. But pigs are smarter than people yeah. give them credit for. I think they say that pigs are smarter, smarter than dogs. Yeah. So. Um, and I, and they say that pigs make phenomenal pets. Because these this couple, they rescue the pigs yeah. from the farms. Um, and they just bring them home. And they just bring them home and they're part of their family. Um, they took out a baby piglet. Oh, my God. Guess who wants a pig? The answer is not Spike. <laughs> Seeing how he reacts to the cats, I'm gonna go with not Spike. Hey, he didn't bark at the TV. We can't he watch the not. dog acts without the dog doing. That is very berserk. true. So he did not bark at the TV. That is true. All right. Well, maybe maybe there's a chance for a piglet. I'm going by the look I'm getting, no, there's not. Okay. <laughs> My favorite was the drummer. I loved the drummer. Yeah. I thought he was so good. He was nervous going out, but. Oh my so good and so. just unexpected yes um and just the, he was the full entertainment package yeah they said simon cowell said that he was a performer and he is um the pig farmer did say that uh or the pig performer did say that he wanted to be the first pigs on Vegas, the vegas strip but so go watch it yes it's so much fun it, it is. really is um yeah and let us know what your favorite act was yeah all right, so um, we are going to, I'm going to run to the post office, and Helen's going to edit the podcast, and then we're going to get our day going. Yeah. We hope you have a wonderful day, everybody, and we'll see you tomorrow.